Hey guys, welcome back. In the previous video we went over pointers. Now we're going to learn about what the stack and the heap are so the next uh, tutorial makes a bit more sense. So the stack and the heap are the two uh, s sections of memory that your program gets to use. So let's go ahead and look uh, here. This big black square or rectangle is random access memory. So we're going to say it starts at the bottom. This is the lowest memory address and it ends at the top up there. And it's just like a big array. It's just a big buffer of memory. And if we ever create variables, they're going to get allocated in here somewhere. It doesn't look exactly like this. Your program actually has kind of random blocks of memory spread around sometimes. Uh, but the stack, at least, is all, I think, contiguous always. So here's the stack. I'm going to go ahead and draw a little box down here. So this little segment of the program memory is the stack. It's really small. It's typically only about one megabyte. And then we have the rest of it, which is the heap. And the heap is something that gets bigger and smaller as you add variables. So it's going to start out really, really tiny, and then you can add more and more stuff to the heap, and it gets bigger and bigger. It gets up to uh, like 2 gigabytes, I think, on a 32-bit machine. On a 64-bit machine, it can get really, really big, just depending on how much RAM you have. So whenever we create variables that are local variables, like in this function, uh, that's going to get allocated on the stack. But if we create global variables, like int g up here, this is going to get allocated on the heap. So this is going to make our heap just a little bit bigger. It's going to add four bytes to our heap, uh, whereas these down here are going to add, uh, these two integers right here are going to add eight bytes to our stack. So what exactly is the stack? So the stack, what's important about it is it lets us know where our program is and, and what's going on in the program. Let's make a little function void print stuff to illustrate why we need the stack. Print stuff. And I'm just going to declare it up here so we don't do a forward declaration. So it's going to be C out high or something like that. And then let's also give it a local variable just so it has a little bit of memory allocated to it. So this print stuff function we're going to call from main. Now let's go ahead and pretend that we are the program. So we start at int main because that's the entry point. We come down here, we allocate int A, then we allocate int B, then we get to this, this print stuff. So we're like, okay, we got to call the print stuff function. So we come up here to print stuff, we allocate a new variable, we see out high, and then we're done. But how do we know where to go? If we keep going down, we're going to get back to int main and we're going to start our program over and we're going to have an infinite loop because we keep calling print stuff again. How does it know that it needs to come back here to return to line 19? Well, the way it knows that is it uses the stack. So what the stack actually is, is it's, a, it's got a few things on it. So each stack frame is... Uh, is basically the contents of one function. So int main is going to be its own stack frame. Let's go ahead and draw the int main stack frame. And it's called the stack because each time you add a new uh, function call, it's going to add a frame to the top, like a stack. It's going to add it on top of it. So here's main right here. Okay, uh, I'm drawing it the same as I did the entire stack before, but this is just a single stack frame. Okay, And then we'll say uh, this is not RAM anymore. This is the stack. That's awful. So this is the stack, not the RAM. Let's do a better job. There we go. I am a pro at paint. So this is the stack now instead of RAM. So we added a main stack frame. So let's go ahead and write main here. This is our main function right here, int main. Whenever we start the program, this stack frame is going to get created. And then whenever we go to int a, it's going to create the int a variable. So we'll say int a here. And then it's going to create uh, the int b variable like this. So we'll say int b. Now these get allocated in memory, right? They have a memory address. And in the previous episode, we printed out the memory address, which happened to be uh, the memory address of the stack because these are allocated in the stack. So we create a, we create b. Now we get to print stuff over here. So what we do is since it's a new function is we add a new stack frame. But before we do that, we write down what line number we're on in int main. So int main keeps track of the line number, which is line 19. This is the return address. So what we do now is we add a new stack frame, and this is the stack frame for print stuff, like this. So we say print stuff, and let's go up to print stuff. So print stuff creates int a, like this, int a, and then it prints something out, which doesn't allocate any memory, it just prints something to the screen, and then it returns. So what's gonna happen is whenever it returns, this stack frame right here, pops off. 
And then since we have a 19 right here, we know to go right back to line 19 and continue our program. Now you'll notice when I popped off that stack frame, our integer a up here that belonged to it, see right there that int a, it disappeared. That's pretty much what happens. It's called getting deallocated. That integer a doesn't exist anymore. It's a local variable. It only exists for the duration of print stuff. After print stuff is over, this a variable is gone. A global variable stays forever. If we put an integer up here, remember this is a global variable, which you're not supposed to use unless it's a global constant, that integer a is going to get allocated up here in the heap. Well, actually, this is still the stack, remember. Uh, we'll draw a new box for the heap. Here's the heap. So our integer a is going to get allocated up here, like int a like that, somewhere in the heap. Now whenever new variables get allocated in the heap, it's not like the stack where they get allocated right after each other, like int a, int b. It's more like they just get kind of randomly allocated, like it could be int a, int b, and then randomly int c. It's not, it's not always a coherent uh, allocation. So if you try printing out the addresses of global variables, they may be next to each other, and they may not. So that's pretty much all you need to know. Each time we call a new function, uh, this stack frame, is go it's going to add a new stack frame. So if we had print stuff call another function, like we'll say print stuff calls uh, do things, and I'm not going to write that function, but what's going to happen is our print stuff thing, let me undo, uh, it's gone. Our print stuff stack frame, this is print stuff, it is going to write down its own uh, little uh, return address, which is 12. It's going to write that down and it's going to add another stack frame up here for do things. And then when do things is done, it pops off and then it comes back to 12. And then since print stuff finishes, that gets popped off and it comes back to 23 and continues the program. Now, since remember I told you the stack is only about one megabyte, we actually can get what's called a stack overflow. And you'll actually recognize that name uh, because there's a website called Stack Overflow that has really useful programming stuff. So let's try to overflow the stack. One thing we could do is call a function, call a bunch of functions uh, so many times using something called recursion to where we blow the stack, which I haven't taught you recursion yet. So instead, we're just going to allocate a really, really big variable on the stack. So let's say int uh, kill the stack, and we're going to give it like, uh, what is that? It's like... 10 million, 10 million integers? Let's do 100 million integers. That's 400 million bytes. That's, that should blow the stack. So let's run it. And there we go. We got unhandled exception. If you zoom in here, you see unhandled exception stack overflow. So that's what happened. What happened was we, whenever we tried to allocate our integer uh, thingy here, uh, what it did is it basically said, okay, we need to fit... Uh, an integer, let's see, we need to fit an integer, kill the stack, and it's like 40 million bytes. So what it tried to do was take our int main stack frame and make it really, really big, and it got bigger than the total size of the stack. And once it tries to get bigger than that, you get a stack overflow, it crashes. You're not allowed to do that. Now, if we wanted an array that's that big, we would have to allocate it on the heap. So if we just make it a global variable, it's going to work. So if I just put it up here and then I run it, it's going to get allocated in the heap. And the heap is ginormous. Remember, the heap can be like 2 gigabytes on a 32-bit machine. So it just creates, uh, it allocates new memory in the heap, no issue. We're going to learn about other ways to allocate memory in the heap. Like maybe you want to declare the variable here, right? You don't want to have a global variable, but you want it to be on the heap. That's what pointers are for, or that's one of the reasons pointers are really useful. So, uh, yep, stay tuned for the next video. We're going to learn more about pointers and how to allocate your own variables on the heap without making global variables.